What's going on? Welcome to this Get A Dom Tune Cylinder 4 Cooling Mod installation video. If you've been wanting a video that shows you step by step how to accomplish this installation, you've come to the right place. I spared absolutely no details from beginning to end. If you've been wondering what this particular modification does, it's actually quite simple in the way that it operates. This T fitting right here is actually going to go into your heater core coolant line. And this hose right here is going to plug into your block. Okay, so I think the best way for me to show you is with this diagram right here. I like diagrams, uh, even though it's not perfect, but the parts that matter are actually accurate. So I want to show you what's going on. This is our engine, and between this line and this line in the center right here, that's our block. And right here you have one head and another head over here. One there and one there. Cylinders one and three, and cylinders four and two over, over here. Your water pump is right here. Water pump's pumping that way, so it's sucking in from the bottom part right here and pushing coolant through the block right here and onto the heads. But look at what's happening right here. Coolant is going into the block and through the holes in the block, it goes through the heads and then on out to the heater right here and then back to the water pump. So if you notice on this side over here, there's a line coming out this way. Okay, this line right here is going to the turbocharger. You can see the turbocharger right there. So on this side, on cylinders one and three, coolant has one more way of escaping the head. So there's more flow of coolant on this side because it goes out back that way and then it goes this way as well. So coolant on this side has two escape paths. On this side, if you notice, there's nothing there. The whole entire purpose of this cooling mod is to add that escape path right here. What that's going to do is that's going to stabilize the temperatures within the block and the heads. It's going to make it more even across the board. And the ultimate goal is providing a little bit more coolant flow on this side right here where cylinder four is, the cylinder that gives us trouble. And doing so, you know, hopefully reduce knock and save our engines. So this right here, all the work that you'll see me do in a second here is going to be performed in this spot right here. So the cooling mod hose is literally going to go from this spot right here to this hose right here. That's all it's doing. So you're going to be adding, you know, something similar to that side right there. And in doing so, that's going to uh, allow coolant to be drawn out of the head right here and back through the water pump, thereby causing more coolant flow on this side. And it's literally just a hose that goes from here to there. It taps into there. Now, cylinder four is our problem child in these cars. If any of your cylinders is going to go, it's going to be cylinder four. So this promises to do away with that problem or at least minimize the chances that that cylinder will fail to begin with. So if this particular mod even comes close to uh, achieving what the uh, promises to achieve, I'm game because it's actually relatively cheap. It's very easy to install and it's a very high quality. So I think it's definitely going to last a very long time. This is the original cylinder four cooling mod. There's quite a few copycats out there now that offer this particular mod. This one seems to be the one of the highest quality. So it's the one that I would recommend over the others. So a couple of housekeeping notes before we get started. I'm going to put the list of all of the tools that you'll need for this installation in the video description. And it's going to include a few specialty tools that are going to be very helpful during the installation. Now, before I use them in the video, I'll show you what they are as they come up. But links in the video description. And if you appreciate this video, I would appreciate you. Let me know in the comment section. Give the video a like and check me out on Instagram. Let's get to it. We'll have to get under the car for this install. Now, a proper lift would be great, but I'm using ramps. And since these are not low profile ramps, I had to get fancy with some pieces of wood to avoid scraping my front lip. You can use a jack and jack stands as well. Just keep in mind, you'll have to remove the bottom cover and the work will be on the driver's side. Whatever you use, make sure that you follow all the safety precautions that may apply and always have at least two points of support. I'm using a jack on the center of the cross member here as well for safety. So now we have to remove that pesky splash shield. I'm gonna start on the front left and work my way around. These two front bolts right here are 12 millimeter bolts. Then we have some pop clips to contend with and for these, a simple clip removal tool makes the job easy. There are three on each wheel well and then if you keep moving back, there's a clip holding the splash shield to the frame that can just be unclipped by hand. And then right next to it, another 12 millimeter bolt right in the center. And the other side is just a mirror image. Just keep in mind, this is for a 2015 plus STI. Other years might have a different splash shield. After all those are off, you can simply maneuver the shield right out of the car. 
I would recommend having hose pinch pliers handy. I've needed these over the years and this is gonna allow me to pinch that lower radiator hose. You're gonna see it in a second. And by pinching it, I'm gonna prevent, you know, a massive amount of coolant just kind of gushing out. And then once the hose is out of the water pump, then I can actually just remove the hose pinch pliers and kind of guide the hose down into the bucket. We'll have to drain the coolant out of the engine for this install. Now there's a few places where this can be done, but I decided to follow the recommendation on the instructions, which call to unplug the lower radiator hose from the water pump. We'll need to have a container big enough for all that coolant that's gonna come out. And if you intend to reuse the coolant, make sure that that container is clean. And of course, make sure that the car has completely cooled down before doing this. This might look a bit awkward because I'm trying to stay out of the way of the cameras, but in any case, do your best to have that bucket ready so you don't make a mess. And it would probably be a smart idea to wear gloves so you don't get your hands all dirty like I did. To speed coolant flow, you can remove the radiator cap. I let this drain for a good 15 minutes to make sure that I got out as much coolant as possible. And this right here is what you can expect to come out of the engine after you're done. Once the coolant is drained, you can connect the lower radiator hose right back to the water pump. This shouldn't be too difficult. You should be able to see exactly where the hose used to be and you should return the hose to that exact spot. This is very important. Once it's back, use some pliers to return the clamp to its original position as well. Okay, so now it's time for the fun stuff. So let me show you where we're gonna be working next for reference. So you know where the next few steps are gonna be. This is the driver's side front tire. And if we go under the car, just in front of the axle, you can see the bolt on the head that we're gonna be removing. To get that plug out of the engine block, you're gonna need one of these 12 millimeters hex bit sockets. Okay, I didn't have one this big, so I had to go to the auto parts store and just get the single one right here. It has a half inch drive, and that's gonna allow me to put the breaker bar onto it like that, and then crank on that plug and get it out of there. So make sure you're definitely gonna need it. 12 millimeter hex bit socket. And as you see here, you will need some extensions as well. This bolt is not torqued that much but there isn't a lot of room, so it can be difficult. So if your breaker bar is not long enough, or if you can't seem to get enough leverage, the best thing to do is just to grab a pipe and put it over the handle, and that'll make short work of it. When it comes loose, you can put a ratcheting wrench on the socket and get it out easily. Now, if we hadn't drained all that coolant, it would be draining out of this spot right now, making a huge mess. So, it would be smart to loosely screw the cooling mod into the head and then get a good idea of where that T-fitting is gonna go. There are two similar hoses down here and the one you want is the lower hose attached to the black metal pipe. It also has an insulation around the hose. Now, I paused the video here because I wanna show you something. This is about where I cut the hose for my own installation. And although there's nothing wrong with that, it doesn't leave much room for error. So I would suggest maybe cutting the hose a little closer to the head, maybe right about here, and then just trimming the cooling mod hose just a little bit to match. Once you find the spot, go ahead and mark it, leave the cooling mod hose there for now, and go and grab your hose cutters. These right here are hose cutters. These are very cheap, and it's gonna allow me to make very clean cuts on the hoses, as you will see. So make sure you have one of these handy before you start this project. With the hose cutters, we're gonna find our spot and simply cut the hose right down the middle. As you'll see, some leftover coolant can leak out of this hose when you cut it. So make sure you have the container underneath to catch that coolant and wear rubber gloves if you have them. When you're done with a cut, remove the rubber insulation as well. Once done with that, we're gonna grab the T-fitting, two warm gear clamps, and a bit driver. To help getting this fitting on the hose, it might help to spray it with some WD-40 for lubrication. We're gonna insert one clamp on each side of the hose like you see here. And as you can imagine, we're gonna install that T-fitting right there between the two ends of the hose we just cut. I'm gonna need both hands to do this, but you get the point. Here you can see that T-fitting is installed. Don't tighten it just yet. Temporarily plug the cooling hose to it to make sure it's facing the right direction and none of the hoses are twisted or kinked. When you're satisfied, you can place those warm gear clamps over the fitting and tighten them. Make sure they are over the barb. There's no torque specification given, but usually they don't require too much. If you see it starting to pinch the hose and it looks like the same diameter of the hose, that's usually a good stopping point. Do not over tighten the hose clamps, they can break easily. 
and when you're done with that, remove the cooling mod hose and take it to the bench. Grab a wire brush and do the best you can to clean the opening of all that thread lock that was on the plug. This might be a bit difficult given the room you have, but do your best. When you're satisfied, grab an absorbent rag to completely dry that opening of coolant. I'm using a glass cleaning wipe here because they are absorbent and don't give off too much lint. Whatever you do, be extremely careful, nothing goes inside the head. Now we're going to grab that hose and if it didn't come already with a metal band over the barb, make sure you put one of the included warm gear clamps on there. We're also going to loosely pre-stage another clamp on the hose like this. Now the thing you have to have for this installation is this ultra gray gasket maker. This is gonna allow us to put it around the threads right here of the cooling mod before we put it into the block. And it's gonna act both as a gasket and a sealant. So it's gonna prevent this from backing out in the future. We're gonna torque it down a little bit, but it's not gonna get torqued down crazy. So this is gonna prevent it from coming out and it's gonna prevent any leaks. Completely necessary, make sure you get an ultra gray gasket maker. The next step is very important. So make sure you don't skip it. We're going to grab that ultra gray gasket maker and we're going to put it over the threads of the plug. Now you can use the cap to puncture the seal on the gasket maker and then screw in the applicator cap. Then we can slowly squeeze some of it out from the end. Make sure you start a couple of threads in so you don't get any of it in the head. If you overdo it, you're just going to end up with a huge mess to clean once you torque this down. Make sure you are ready to put it on once you're done. If you let it dry, you'll have to clean it and start all over. You know you did it right if a very light ring of gasket maker squeezes out when you're done torquing this down. Now we're simply going to grab the hose and screw it by hand onto the head. It's always super important to tighten by hand before using tools or you can end up with stripped threads and that would be a nightmare. Once we get that plug out and we put in the cooling mod hose in there, uh, we're going to have to find a way to crank it down. There's not a lot of room in there. You're going to see that in a second. For this purpose, we're going to use a one inch crow's foot wrench. This set right here is pretty cheap. I'll link it in the video description and it does have the one inch, which is what I need for this particular job. This is going to allow me to put it around the fitting right there and then I'll put extensions on there in a ratchet wrench and torque it into the spot. So one inch crow's foot wrench. With our crow's foot wrench and some extensions, we can tighten this hose. This might take a few minutes because the space is tight, but you will quickly see why the crow's foot wrench was necessary. Just remember that the head is aluminum, which isn't the hardest metal. You don't want to torque this down like crazy. Once it doesn't go any further, give it a final pull and you should be good to go. Now we can connect that hose to the T-fitting. I'm definitely going to need both hands to do this, so you won't be able to see, but it's clear what you have to do. When the hose is fully over the fitting, grab that 7mm socket and ratcheting wrench and fully tighten that warm gear clamp. And with that, the cooling mod is installed, but we're definitely not done yet. It's actually time to take a break. At this point, we need to give that gasket maker 24 hours to cure. So take a break, relax, and don't rush this. I'll see you in a few. All right, so we've reached the fun part of this install. Obviously, we took a lot of the coolant out of the system and we have to put it back. So this is gonna be the first question that you have to ask yourself. Are you going to reuse that coolant or buy new coolant? If your coolant is old and you're nearing that service interval of uh, coolant replacement, then I would absolutely recommend that you just replace it with new coolant. My car has very low miles and I'm nowhere near that and there's nothing wrong with that coolant that came out of it. So I'm gonna save some money and just reuse that coolant. I would advise that if you need to add coolant to the system at all, that you use Subaru Super Coolant or the proper coolant that goes in your car. Uh, I know these cars are kind of finicky with the head gaskets, at, le at least they used to be. So why take chances when that particular coolant is made specifically for the aluminum heads that these cars have? So keep that in mind, if you need to replace a coolant, make sure that you order it ahead of time. You can order it from Amazon or you can just go to your local Subaru dealer and probably purchase it from their parts department. Next thing is make sure you do this at least 24 hours after you install the cooling mod. Remember that we put that gasket maker on there and that gasket maker needs 24 hours to cure. So unless you use that quick drying stuff, which I wouldn't recommend, I would recommend that you use the proper stuff that, that I use, then you should definitely give it at least 24 hours. For me, it's been 24 hours. That's why I'm getting ready to do this. Before we get started doing this, make sure that you pinch that cooling mod like I'm showing you right here. And the reason why we're doing that is because uh, it's just one less path for coolant to travel, for air bubbles to travel. So it should make purging the system of air easier. So we have to fill the system with coolant, fresh coolant, and we have to burp the system. Why do we have to burp the system? Well, when we remove that lower radiator hose, 
when we remove that plug from the block, when we cut that heater core line, all of those points introduce air into the system. And if you leave those pockets of air in there, that's just parts of the engine that are, that are gonna get really hot. So if, if you don't purge the system of air, your car can overheat and you can have catastrophic failure. So this is 100% a necessary step, but it doesn't have to be a difficult step. That's the reason why I bought this particular kit right here. This is a no spill kit, because as you're gonna see, it can get messy. But with this, it greatly reduces the chance that you're gonna have you know, coolant spilling all over the place. And it's just a, a very ingenious way of doing it. So I would recommend getting one of these. You can get them at your local parts store or I'll link in the video description uh, to a link where you can get one as well. So I'm gonna go ahead and get started with this. Step one is gonna be making sure that all the hoses are plugged back in the way that they're supposed to be. I'm gonna close the radiator cap and then I'm going to start introducing coolant back into the system via this reservoir right here. Let's get to that. As you saw, the no spill kit comes with several different size caps to fit different vehicles. For this kit, the one that worked perfectly for the STI was the one labeled B, and that's the one you see me plugging in here. After that, we're going to securely fit the funnel onto that fitting we just placed on the coolant reservoir. The next step is easy. We're going to slowly add coolant to the no spill kit until it stops accepting it. You'll have to go slow with this. But right now, what we're doing is replacing the majority of that coolant we took out. If all that coolant gets sucked down, just add more a little bit at a time. Once the bucket stops accepting coolant, massage the air out of the upper and lower radiator hoses like you see here. You can see how much more air came out when I just did that. Okay, so we just put as much coolant in the system as it would take. So it's mostly full, but it, it does still have those pockets of air that we still have to work out. But I wanted to show you what's going on with this little device here so that you understand what we're trying to accomplish. There's that air that's still in the system needs to find a way out. In order to have the coolant completely flow through the entire system, we have to allow the engine to come to temperature. That way the thermostat opens and actually allows the coolant to flow. And we also have to turn the heater on max heat to allow that coolant to also flow through the heater core. So these are 100% necessary steps. I'm gonna turn on the car, put the heat on max, and allow the car to come to temperature and just watch the bubbles come up on this little container right here. What's gonna happen is as the bubbles come up, the air that they used to occupy inside the engine is gonna get replaced with this fluid right here. That's why this device is so ingenious. It's, it's just perfect for this. So it's gonna ensure that the system is filled to capacity like it's supposed to be, and that there's absolutely no air in there. And as you can see, it does it without spilling coolant, but you have to do it right. So when the car is no longer taking in coolant, make sure that you only fill the coolant up to about a third of the bucket right here. And the reason you wanna do that is because depending on which part of the cooling cycle the car is on, uh, fluid could actually come up or down. So if you have the coolant like up to here, you could actually overflow this. So in order to prevent that, we're only gonna to go to about a third of the container. And by the same token, if the coolant in the reservoir right here happens to go below the, the fill cap right here, make sure that you add more coolant until the burping is done. I'm gonna go ahead and start the car so we can start purging the cooling system of air. It took me close to half an hour to do this completely, so make sure you have the time. Every time an air bubble escapes, it gets replaced by coolant from the container up here. Again, if it gets low, add more coolant. Keep it to about a third throughout so you don't suck air back in. Every few minutes, peek at your temperature to make sure that your car isn't overheating. After about 20 minutes, or after you haven't seen any bubbles for a while, get in your car and rev the engine to three to 4,000 RPM. And like you see here, it might force out a few of the deeper air pockets. After the fans have cycled a couple of times and you haven't seen any air bubbles in over five minutes, you can consider the cooling system purged of air. Okay, so we're done burping the system. Everything went perfectly fine. So now it's time to get this little puppy out of there. And if you're wondering how the heck we're gonna pull it out without spilling all of the coolant out of there, well, that's what this little device is for. Now, make sure that the coolant is cool before you do this because if you spill it or get it on yourself, you can really burn yourself if it's hot. All you're gonna do is you can grab this little T-handle right here and you're gonna plug the bottom of the bucket just like that. Okay, now a little bit might spill out, just a couple of drops. So you can put rag or something like this around there. So when you pull it up, um, you're not you know, spilling that little bit that's on the very bottom all over the place. So all we're gonna do is pull it out. See, this is actually coming up a little bit. So when I take this cap off, 
a little bit more is going to spill out. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to absorb some of this coolant that's on the very top. That way it doesn't just spill out on me when I pull this cap off. Once you get that done, you can just replace the original cap and that's it. Now that we're done putting the car back together and burping the system, now's the time to turn the car back on and check for leaks. Before you turn the car on, make sure that if you pinch that coolant mod, that you unpinch it and remove those hose pinch pliers. And while you're down there, make sure that there's absolutely no leaks in the area of your installation. I already did that, everything's great. I've turned on the car and I'm just checking to make sure that there's absolutely no leaks and that I didn't miss anything. The caps are all on where they should be. The coolant reservoir right here, make sure that's up to the fill line. You're not gonna be able to see on there. Make sure that's filled up properly to the fill line. And then make sure you get under the car and check for leaks again, one final time before you replace that bottom tray cover. Now for the next week or so, make sure you monitor your temperature inside the car. Make sure that you're not overheating. Make sure that it looks normal. And every now and then when the car is cold, make sure that you take a look at this overflow tank right here and make sure that your coolant in here is still within those two lines. If you need to add any to it once the car is cold, go ahead and fill it back up to the fill line and then you'll be good to go. So that's going to do it for this installation video. I hope that I was detailed enough to allow you to do this at home. Let me know in the comment section what you think or if you have any questions. And if you appreciate the video, make sure you give it a like. I'm going to get this car buttoned up, take it for a spin and start recording my next video. I'll see you there. Take care.